What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we're breaking down a new study that looks at a very popular question I get. Does your metabolic rate decline with age? One of the things I've heard as long as I remember in nutrition is you gain weight when you get older because your metabolism declines. Uh, in fact, when I, not to pick on women, but I typically hear a lot of women say that, well, postmenopausal or menopause, you know, causes hormonal changes that slow your metabolic rate. There's a new study that's been done looking at total energy expenditure and metabolic rate throughout the course of life and had some really cool findings. There's a paper by Herman Ponser who actually has a book out called Burn that I would actually say as far as like mainstream diet books go is actually quite good. I don't agree with everything in it, but I agree with probably 98% of it. So if you're looking for a good book to pick up, that might be one if you don't already have mine. But the reason this study was so unique, it was a very large number of people, over 6,000 subjects looking at total daily energy expenditure and over 2,000 subjects looking at metabolic rate or basal metabolic rate. Now, if you're Jason Fung, based on an old video he put up, you might think that basal metabolic rate and total daily energy expenditure are the same thing. They are not. So your total daily energy expenditure is literally the summation of all the energy you expend during a day. Your basal metabolic rate is a good chunk of that. It's around 50 to 70% depending on your physical activity. There are other things that also contribute to your total daily energy expenditure like physical activity, the thermic effect of food, when it comes to physical activity, there's kind of two different sections. There's your unintentional movements. That's like non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And then there's the exercise or the purposeful movements you choose to do. All this stuff, your BMR plus your TEF plus your physical activity, all those add up to your total daily energy expenditure. The way they looked at total daily energy expenditure was using something called doubly labeled water, which is very non-invasive. You literally just drink water that's labeled with stable isotopes on the hydrogen and the oxygen. And based on where those labels go, how much winds up in say your breath as CO2, how much winds up in your urine and different body pools, they can actually determine approximately what your total daily energy expenditure is. It's a pretty cool technique. As we've talked about before, it's not perfect. Like for, for example, with low carb diets, the doubly labeled water technique tends to overestimate energy expenditure in low carb diets. But for a non-invasive technique, the correlation between your total daily energy expenditure as assessed by doubly labeled water versus actually being in a metabolic chamber are pretty close. They use doubly labeled water to test total daily energy expenditure on people over 6,000 subjects from newborns all the way up to people who were 95. So really wide range of subjects and very, very cool. They also, again, measured via indirect calimetry basal metabolic rate on over 2,000 subjects. So what did they find? Well, the first thing they found was that Fat-free mass, lean body mass, basically was a huge contributor to total daily energy expenditure and basal metabolic rate. You cannot disconnect fat-free mass from total daily energy expenditure because people who have greater fat-free mass will have greater total daily energy expenditure. For example, from an absolute amount, men have a greater total daily energy expenditure than women, but on average, men also have greater fat-free mass. When fat-free mass is equated between men and women, there's actually no difference in total daily energy expenditure or metabolic rate. So sorry, ladies, those of you who say, well, I'm a female, my metabolic rate's lower. As an absolute amount, yes, but on a per gram of lean tissue basis, no. They did what was called a regression to basically explain this relationship between fat-free mass as well as fat mass and total daily energy expenditure and basal metabolic rate they used this regression because they needed to correct for fat-free mass and fat mass because both of those impact metabolic rate and total daily energy expenditure. So the data I'm going to present is going to be talking about the data after it's been corrected for fat-free mass and fat mass. So what did they find? Well, they found that from year zero or like eight days old 
all the way up to one year, there's a pretty quick increase in metabolic rate and total daily energy expenditure. And that continues into childhood. Now this peaked around one to two years of age and then slowly declined up until about age 20. At the peak of one to two years of age, their total daily energy expenditure was about 150% greater when corrected for fat-free mass and fat mass than what you would see in adulthood. So why is that? Well, children, small children, have much greater proportion of their lean mass from organs like liver and heart and brain. And those organs are much more energetically demanding on a per gram basis compared to skeletal muscle. Now skeletal muscle, once you get big enough, is your most energetically demanding organ. But on a per gram basis, these other organs are more energetically demanding. So again, when corrected for their total body size, one to two year olds have a much faster metabolic rate, much greater total daily energy expenditure than adults. Now this progressively declines until about age 20. And here's the spoiler alert from age 20 to age 60 metabolic rate and total daily energy expenditure are flat solid. It doesn't really change. The absolute amount does change based on your fat-free mass and fat mass. So as you get over the age of 40, there is what's called sarcopenia, which is the progressive loss of muscle tissue, which by the way, resistance training can attenuate that. So in terms of an absolute metabolic rate or absolute total daily energy expenditure, yes, it probably does decline after a certain age, but all of that can be explained by the fact that these people are losing lean body mass. Once you hit age 60, there does appear to be a progressive decline in metabolic rate and total daily energy expenditure, even when you correct for fat-free mass and fat mass. However, it's pretty darn small. It's about 0.7% per year. And I believe if you get to be like 90 years old, uh, your metabolic rate will have declined something like 25%. So not inconsequential, but also most 90 year olds aren't shoveling down a bunch of food because they have other problems in terms of digestive issues or they have issues with chewing. Most people don't become spontaneously obese later in life. Obesity tends to be an adult onset problem, although now it can be a child onset problem, which many people argue that obese people have slower metabolic rates, which has actually been shown to not be true in the scientific literature. So big takeaways from this are from age 20 to age 60, adulthood, your metabolic rate does not slow down. Your total daily energy expenditure does not decline. It may decline an absolute amount just based on the fact if you've lost fat free mass, but in terms of the rate per gram of tissue, it does not drop. One other thing to keep in mind is that as people age into adulthood, they become much less physically active. There is a lot of data to show that children, adolescents, and then up to about, about age 20, people are far more active they stand far more and they do far more steps than people after age 40 or age 60. Yes, there is a decline in metabolic rate that's independent of fat mass and fat free mass, but part of that decline in total daily energy expenditure, a good part, is due to the fact that as you get older, you just don't move as much. And I would argue with the people who say that menopause causes your metabolic rate to slow down. Most women go through menopause in their late 40s and 50s. 60 is really, really old to go through menopause. So it doesn't appear that those hormonal changes impact your metabolic rate. However, if you don't feel as good and you don't have as much energy, it's probably quite likely that you just spontaneously move less. And that could possibly explain a decrease in energy expenditure. So long story short, sorry, your metabolism probably isn't slow uh, unless you're hitting that age 60. And even then it declines very, very slowly. You're not going to become obese overnight <laughs> from a decline in energy expenditure. Guys, if you liked the video, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week.